This video is going to be all about how to assign oxidation numbers to an element within a compound. And the reason that we're looking at assigning oxidation numbers is because before we talk about oxidation reduction reactions, you need to know how to actually assign the oxidation number to each element in order to determine if it's a redox reaction. So assigning oxidation numbers is more of a bookkeeping system. Here are the rules that we, that we follow when assigning oxidation numbers. So the first one is that the oxidation number of an atom in its elemental form is zero. So elemental form being the key word there. So some examples, we have sodium, H2 gas, Br2 liquid, S8, this is sulfur's most stable form, neon. So anything that's in its most stable form is zero. The second rule is that the oxidation number of a monatomic ion, monatomic means one atom, so the oxidation number of a one atom ion is the same as its charge. So here's some examples. We have Na+, plus, Ca2+, plus, Al3+, plus, Cl-, minus. all of those oxidation numbers correspond exactly to the charge. So you can think about oxidation numbers almost like the charge of the atom, but sometimes it gets a little bit weird. So the third rule is that nonmetals usually have negative oxidation numbers. Oxygen usually has an oxidation number of minus two. Now there are some exceptions in peroxides, and peroxides are O2, two minus. In peroxides, each oxygen atom will be minus one. So when you're assigning oxidation numbers, you wanna look for each individual atom. And when it's combined with fluorine, it will actually be plus two. And the reason being is because the most uh, electronegative atom is always the one that's gonna be negative. So F is the most electronegative, F is always going to be minus one. So some examples, we have H2O. Oxygen is minus two, hydrogen, each one of them is plus one. In this one, oxygen is minus two, calcium is plus two. So you can see, notice here, this is hydrogen peroxide, so this is O2, two minus. So each of the oxygen atoms is minus one. And then same thing within the peroxide ion, each of them are minus one. And then because fluorine is the most electronegative atom, it is going to be minus and oxygen will be plus two. So then the next rule that we're gonna look at is that hydrogen's oxidation number will be plus one when bonded to a non-metal, minus one when bonded to a metal. So hydrogen normally is plus one because when it's bonded to a non-metal, it's gonna be positive. But if we put it with a metal, it's actually gonna form the hydride ion and it's gonna be minus one. And then we'll jump back up to number four. So in compounds, fluorine, always has the oxidation number of minus one. Notice in compounds, because F2 is zero, because it's in its most stable state. But in a compound, fluorine always has an oxidation number of minus one, because it's the most electronegative. So here are some examples looking at hydrogen. Notice when it's with a non-metal, it's plus one. When it's with a metal, it's minus one. And then the next rule, halogens usually have an oxidation number of minus one, the exception is when chlorine, bromine, and iodine are combined with oxygen, because in this case, oxygen is the, is the more electronegative atom, and so it's going to be the one with the negative charge. So notice that typically, okay, typically, oxidation numbers correspond to the charge that an atom will make when it forms an ion. Now, sometimes there are weird ones with chlorine or with bromine here, being positive, but that's just why we have to go through and work through this every time. So if none of these rules help you get started, so you have these rules that are in your notes, you also have the rules that are the very front page of your notes. If none of these help you get started, just look for an atom with a known charge and use that charge as its oxidation number. So example, CDS. We know that sulfur forms a minus two ion, which then means that cadmium would be plus two. The reason being is because the sum of all of the oxidation numbers have to be zero. So whenever you have, notice all of these add up to zero because these are all neutral compounds. So like I just said, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is zero, and the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in an ion have to equal the charge of the ion. So here's just some more examples, ALH3. So we have aluminum and we have hydrogen. So this is aluminum hydride. The hydrogen is with a metal. Okay, therefore, the hydrogen will be minus one. Al is plus three. 
Most metals, unless they have more than one oxidation state, like iron or copper, the metals are going to be exactly like the charges that we know on the periodic table. So now here's one. We have S2O3. So here we just have oxygens, right? This isn't a peroxide, so each of these oxygens is going to be minus 2. So total, if you have three of them, what's that total charge? Minus 6. So this O3 right here is minus 6. Overall, this ion needs to equal minus 2. So if this is minus 6, what would each of these S's have to be in order to make this entire thing equal to negative 2? And well, each of them would have to be plus 2 because you have plus 2 times 2, that's plus 4. 4 minus 6 equals negative 2. And then we have, we have sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7. Now, sodium is always plus 1, it's a metal. Then, use the oxygen first to figure out what the chromium would be. Now, you also could do this looking at Cr2O7 has to equal the charge of its ion, and dichromate is minus 2. So, we know that oxygen is minus 2. So, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So, what would the Cr have to be to make this entire thing equal to 0? So, right now, this is 2 total. This is minus 14 total. Cr would have to be plus 6. So notice we just have to do some algebra as we work through in order to figure out all of the oxidation states. And then we could also do CO2. CO2 would have an oxygen being negative 2, carbon being plus 4. So again, like I said, use algebra to determine oxidation numbers of difficult atoms. And this example just shows you how you could actually go through knowing that hydrogen is plus 1, oxygen is minus 2, and then actually just plugging in X for sulfur. Now the reason that this equals zero is because this is a neutral molecule. This does not have a charge up here. This is a neutral molecule, so it has to equal zero. Okay, so you could go through, use algebra to determine all of these difficult um, oxidation numbers and notice that in this case Cl, because it's with oxygen, Cl is not minus one. Cl is actually plus seven. Okay, so then tricky ones. So, for example, um, you have FeSO4. You know that SO4 has to be negative 2 because it's the sulfate ion. And so then to make a neutral compound, Fe has to be plus 2. So you can actually kind of use what we've done with naming and writing formulas in order to figure out the oxidation state on some of these metals that could have more than one possible oxidation state. So notice the difference between this up here. You have one of each. You have one Fe, one SO4, two minus. Notice down here you have two Fe's and three SO4, three, SO4 two minuses. So if you actually reverse, right, you know SO4 should be two minus, Fe would be three plus.